Like everywhere else in Southeast Asia, there are an awful lot of bicycles in Laos. The capital, Vientiane, is a small city with few cars or trucks. There are none of the traffic jams or pollution of Bangkok in neighboring Thailand. Laos communist rulers have prevented an influx of people from the countryside. Fewer than 400,000 citizens live in Vientiane. The communists have been in power a little over 13 years. In February, they held the first election since they took control. And now the government is opening up Laos to the outside world, both economically and socially. Farmers are now allowed to sell their produce on the free market. The socialist measures which forced peasants into agricultural cooperatives have been relaxed. The driving force behind the reforms is Kesone Pomvehan, the energetic prime minister and communist party leader. He's led the country since the 1975 coup. In his own words, Laos is now open, but there is still a lot to do. The Victory Monument in Vientiane, a celebration of the socialist takeover, a reminder that at its heart, this remains a communist country. Laos depends largely on foreign aid, mainly from the Soviet bloc. But recently, Sompratit Vorasane, Vice Minister of Commerce, announced a series of new foreign investment projects, mainly involving Thailand. The markets of Vientiane accept several currencies, American dollars, the Thai baht, and Laos's own, the kip. Its circulation is tightly controlled, without which the currency could collapse. One of Laos's biggest economic problems is that it's landlocked, dependent on its neighbors, Thailand and Vietnam, for access to the sea. As a consequence, its exports are expensive on the world market. Highways are being upgraded in an attempt to improve trade with the rest of the region. And if bad roads slow up traffic, so do the ferries which slowly cross the many rivers, carrying little more than a truck at a time. Plans for a series of bridges are still on the drawing board. A power line across the Mekong River feeds electricity to Thailand. Ironically, many areas of Laos lack electricity, but the export of power to its neighbor is its biggest foreign exchange earner. In the fields around Vientiane, endless rows of hardwood logs, the other big money spinner for the Lao economy. But this too has hit problems. At the start of the year, the Lao government introduced restrictions on hardwood exports, hoping this would bolster sales. But experts say the price is now too high for what is not the best quality timber. Laos is also suffering on the home front. Rice, the staple food, is in short supply in some remote areas, which suffered bad droughts last year. The poor harvest followed three good crops in succession, but Laos had failed to build reserves of rice in the years of near self-sufficiency. The changes affecting life in Laos have not yet spread to the sparsely populated rural areas. In the hills of the south, people are still poor, sometimes living on the edge of hunger. Many families have traditionally earned a living selling food at the roadside. The Lao diet consists mainly of rice, supplemented with pork, beef, some fish and plenty of chicken. Elsewhere in Vientiane there are new French restaurants and imported wine. But they're for the rich and tourists, as are another innovation. The Vien Lati discotheque is run by the government and it's crowded every evening. It's one of about a dozen nightclubs which have sprung up in recent months. The crowd, a mixture of the young elite, businessmen and a handful of tourists, dance the Ramwong, 
a traditional Lao dance. Every club provides partners, ladies who will drink and dance with male customers. Another sign of the times in Vientiane. A year ago, this would have been unheard of. But now there are around half a dozen computer game arcades in the city, crowded with children from morning to night. Elsewhere in Vientiane, theatres have opened, showing video cassettes of popular feature films on small television sets. Even on a weekday night, they can attract 200 customers. But some traditions remain intact. Once discouraged by the communists, although never banned, the Lao form of Buddhism has reasserted its central place in society. Early morning, and the monks receive food from women in the streets of Vientiane. The monks rely on the goodwill of the people for money as well as food. It's a ritual of pre-communist life which has survived. For the monks, this will be their only meal of the day. So far, Laos has taken but a small step towards democracy. But people seem happy with the pace of change. It remains to be seen how far down the road to reform they'll be taken. For now, it smiles. The door to the outside world has been opened, and they seem to like what they see. <laughs> 